so it's recording so you have yeah so today is the subject is letting go what we are ready to let go it could be some painful experience it could be grief it could be and some blockages that uh, or your uh, perception of yourself that you're ready to go if you have nothing to go like you can let go some overweight <laughs> it's always a good reason <laughs> to do or maybe some anger that you still holding you know that something is hidden if you don't know what you want to let go and there still be something that is uh, holding you back so what you need to let go what is holding you back you can just say whatever is holding me back i'm let i'm letting it go and be very gentle with you so drink enough water and uh, as always if you get overwhelmed there is a simple exercise when you clap three times over your head and this helps to reset your brain. So it's like really align and move forward. Please ask your questions when, whenever you have one. It's much easier for me when you ask questions and it's more entertaining and not entertaining, but more interesting for others because you can ask questions that everybody is uh, thinking but for some reason don't ask or think or have a different opinion about it and uh, don't hesitate to share your opinion about something that we're uh, going to work on so i'm definitely don't uh, place myself in the position that i know everything and i will be very happy with you if you can share your your thoughts about it and maybe uh, and if I and if you believe that I'm saying something that is really doesn't <laughs> make sense let me know because I'm I'm learning along with you so I'm just started uh, neurographic a little bit earlier so but it's uh, still the learning curve and I hope it will be forever for, for my lifetime okay and it's a good reminding that i need to turn off my cell phone my husband is shopping so it was all <laughs> allowed so okay so today is letting go so i want you to pick the subject what you want to let go don't try to let go everything at the same time it will be overwhelming think about something that is a priority number one right now so don't uh, try to um, put everything in the same bucket and just throw it away maybe there is a uh, option for it but i think it will be not pleasant and it will be very hard to uh, to do in one drawing so i want you to start a little bit slow and allow yourself to experience how it goes and when you will be confident enough you can let go something else or a little bit more and more and more so we will have a, a different like you can go as deep as you want and it's a, and it's not need to be done in one drawing and it's not need to be done in one day so you may repeat this drawing as many times as possible sometimes i do 10 drawings about some um, very complex uh, subjects like relationship or uh, if i start uh, a business or something uh, very big for me emotional i do multiple drawings for sure because it's a different layer that needs to be filled and needs to be um, cleaned and achieved okay so before we can go i hope you've found what you want to let go and uh, I want you to, like before we start, I ne we need to activate this neurons that has this um, associations with the subject, what you want to go. So you can uh, just indicate the theme. I want to let go the anger that doesn't serve me 
well anymore. You can be this, or well, I want to let go this sickness, or I want to let go this relationship that happened, ended already 20 years ago, but still holding me back. Or well, I want to let go guilt. So just think what you want to let go and we'll do two minutes exercise as we usually do. So two, I have my paper and I have my pen. I have my two minutes up. Okay, let's, let me pause and think what I want to let go today. I want to let go today. Hmm. I want to let go today guilt, sense of guilt in general. This is actually one of the most difficult things to let go. Okay, two minutes. Are you ready? Set. And again, you just write down words that comes up in your mind about the things that you choose. Okay, two minutes, go. Okay, oh, it was like a confession <laughs> for me, interesting. Uh, uh, okay, so take a look uh, on your list and see which word is repeated maybe several times or maybe something that really strikes you, something that is really you would never put it on this list. It's uh, in my case, it's interesting that it's so much. Um, I will, my theme is guilt, let go of some guilt, sense of guilt. And I have the word gates that is really, um, it's about my mental perception that at the final call when you, you will be at the gate in the front of the Eden or 
um, hell, <laughs> they will be measuring what you, what you, uh, what your sins are. So it's a little bit too religious for me today. I'm like usually not as uh, religious, but it's very deep. It looks like it's very deep in me and it's encoding. So, and at the end of the, my list, it's, um, there was a very clear sense for me that it's not somebody else is going to judge me. It's me going to judge myself no matter when right now at the moment when it's happened or when it will be my last uh, is exhale so it's like really uh, my call what i've done wrong and this is what really holding me back this um so okay so it's a little bit uh, bigger than i expected for <laughs> such class and I hope you will not lose me somewhere in the middle <laughs> in my emotional uh, journey so anybody wants to share what strikes you any uh, insights from the list for you so I hope uh, you don't have to not to pause this video again be careful like the last <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I hope, but it's, uh, I will try to make sure that it uh, will be. Um, no, it's fine. I'm just joking. Yes, for me, it was very interesting to, and when deep, I was thinking about anger. And at first, I was thinking about um, being, um, not having the freedom. But then I didn't, at the end, it turned out to be not um, having um, people not understanding me instead of not giving me the freedom, but not supporting me and understanding me. Okay, so, so it's a lack of understanding uh, and it leads to the lack of supporting. In um, lack of freedom as well. And lack of freedom, yeah. of, of course. Okay, and it's usually people don't understand you when you don't talk what you're really feeling. Like when you try to disguise what you, and hide what you're really feeling, it's getting messy and people just don't understand most of it. So it's, um, when you speak your truth from your heart, you could be very um, quiet, but people will get it somehow. Because it's not just words, it's uh, emotions that is show up. I'm like very, um, and you will be very clear what you want when you know what you want. It's like it's um, it's another question. Like if you know what you want. Okay, sorry for right. interruption. And it's uh, I think it's uh, some somehow it was important. Okay, okay, anybody else? Thank you. We'll see. We'll see what you. And again, the theme could be beginning as one, and it can be changed. So it can um, not mutate, but uh, transform in something deeper, or maybe something just completely different. So maybe it's a uh, when you have a, uh, in most cases, like when you start working with the uh, anger, for example because everybody's working with anger these days, uh, you will end up working with the fear or opposite. You start working with fear and you going end up with uh, uh, anger. Some, uh, some of those could be uh, hiding each other. So it's, uh, it's, so be open to it. So don't really uh, st stuck with uh, what you began with because it will be transforming it's a three hours class the whole world can be changed in three hours so it's like allow it to change so allow it to to uh, open up and show you deeper uh, emotions and deeper uh, understanding of yourself first of all okay anybody else If no questions, I'm switching my camera and we'll start to draw. You can ask and share your experience at any time. So today, this is my drawing that I've done. 
this is oh, I actually did two drawings I want to show you so this is one this is another so this one I used different types uh, different colors of gel pens uh, you can try to use it but it will be it will be hard to integrate them all together they will still be foreigners to me each of them so i when i did everything in white this was uh, much clearer for me that everything is united and you can do it uh, on white on black or black on white as well so don't feel that you need to work with white markers on black i'm just I uh, want to show something uh, different. That's why I'm using the black and white. But it's only um, to show you that it's possible other materials to be used. That's all. So nothing really um, significant out of it. And so black marker on white paper will work exactly the same. It will have the same impression. Okay. So, I hope this will work. And I can, like, if my white will not work today, I will just switch to the black. We'll see. So, you have your theme. And I want you to allow your hand to draw any shape on your paper that will represent your theme. For example, I'm working with the guild and I allow it to be just any, any, any shape. So it could be spiky, it could be not spiky. So any um, curves, I want it to be closed. So And just take a look. If it's a spiky, it means there is something aggressive about this um, feeling. Something that could be very distracting. If it's not, so it's... Uh, and it's interesting, like when we have something aggressive and something that is obviously dangerous, we somehow allow it to work um, we start working on it much faster. But if it uh, seems innocent and nothing really happens, like nothing bad, it's just guilt. So it's really, I don't blame anybody. It's myself who is suffering. This is usually denied, suppressed, and sit until it's uh, manifested in some kind of sickness, chronic disease, or some um, emotional disturbance. Like, and you don't really know why it, it there is hidden. Okay, so I have my shape. Now I collect all this energy that related all to this theme. Like, if it's anger, I collect all anger from my body. I can even notice where in my body there is the biggest charge of anger. So now I'm working with my guilt. So I'm scanning uh, all my body and try to collect everything from the my toes to my feet, hip, hips, uh, stomach, arms, everything going to my right hand because I'm right right hand and I holding the pen like this I'm like really allowing pressing it down all my emotions going down to the tip of my pen and I make a deep breath in breathe out and I allow it just to let it go if if your paper was um, teared this is even better. Whew, it was quite a big catharsis. So if you have invisible lines like I do, 
I'm just making them bolder. I, I make them visible because there is something that some gilded is hidden in my body, in my, even I don't uh, recognize them. And before we make anything else, we start really rounding all corners. It's very similar to what we've done with um, lifting inner constraints. And lifting inner constraints could be very helpful as well. But in this particular exercise, I have some secret ingredients later. So before we go to that point, we need to uh, just round all this corners. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I think I can now see everything. And I just round all the corners. Did anyone had a catharsis bigger than the shape? Uh, yes, mine is bigger. So, so okay, so make it uh, round, make it bigger, make the shape bigger uh, around this uh, catharsis. First of all, it's um, the charge is so big, but you underestimate how much you're holding. So this is a, the shape is just, do I know how much I have to go? And the catharsis showed the truth, like you have to let go so much. And this is you, if it's a bigger than your outline, it means that it's, um, you underestimate. So I'm, for example, I can make it a little bit bigger here because I have something that, is running away. But in so my what case, are under, what are we underestimating? Underestimating uh, of the impact of the thing that you're letting go, that you are trying to let go. So if, uh, for example, if I working with the guilt, I was underestimate how much guilt I was holding back. If you were working with the anger, for example, you're underestimating how much you had it or how much it was uh, really, um, how much emotionally you, it's uh, holding you back. If it's a grief, like you don't give it appropriate attention because it's, um, it's so big. So I want you to, first of all, I want you to see the real size and make the shape that really representing the value of these things that uh, you want to let go. Interesting, I'm really working on the, um, boundaries i'm like very trying to protect it somehow okay so Hiding. when you ex when you expand your original shape does it matter how you expand it like should it look exactly like the original shape or can you just kind of just no add no lines of put in, pull it in? well just any shape that is uh, organic with the catharsis so I'm just extended a little bit on my side. You can draw a completely different new shape outline just to see what it is. It could be a completely different quality. Like if you had a, uh, let's say triangle at the beginning and at the end you can have completely different example. Let's me take black and white. Oh. Yeah, the shape really does not matter. It's not uh, really very important in this exercise. And what's happened to me? 
So if I had a triangle and my catharsis was like this, and I decided that this will be outline, this will be fine. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Shape will be dissolved anyway, so uh, the original shape. This is just to show you the, uh, how big it is for you and how um, the quality of it was it. Uh, if, you've, if you had many spikes like a star or some uh, triangle, you feel that it could be dangerous for you, the original quality that you want to let go. So we just uh, rounding all the corners and see how it's already changing and what is changing in your body is there any changes in your emotions? Catharsis could be very emotional. So we can. Keep breathing, make sure that you're still breathing. Don't hold your breath. So if you need to make a break and just have a deep breath in, if it's too emotional or if it's, it could be um, overwhelming, depending on the theme that you're working on. If it's very e emotional, take a sip of water and breathe keep breathing it could be um, the discomfort that you can feel is it's okay we changing we are changing ourselves and for many people some things that's they say that they're ready, ready to go. There is a hidden fear, what I'm going to be without it. So allow yourself just experiment. How is it gonna be without it? Allow yourself to feel some discomfort, some maybe even anxiety about it. It's okay. Don't try to suppress any emotions that show up because like if they show up right now, you are in safe place. So let them just observe them. It's not a fun drawing. It's um it's will be joy at the end but it's um we can go through some interesting processes allow ourselves to be uncomfortable in reaching our goal okay Notice how your body is reacting. This could be some 
changes, some discomfort in the body. It could be some joyful, like when something is really ready to go, you can feel the freedom in the body. Sometimes you really notice when something is gone, only after it's gone. You never notice when it was there, but it's, when it's gone, suddenly you understand which part of the body was holding it back. So Anna, I have a question. This is Wendy. Yes. Um, so I I didn't like my first drawing because I did I, the the catharsis was bigger than my 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 original thing I'm letting go of. So mm -hmm. I drew it again um, on another sheet of paper, and it had kind of the same shape on both of them of, <laughs> for the catharsis, which was really interesting. It was this big um, dip at the bottom? Um, to, so should I just go back to my original one or does it matter which one I go to? Or? It really does not matter. Maybe you will need to do both of them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But it, this is a very clear sign that it's, uh, you have a perception mm -hmm. how your theme should look. <laughs> and it's another uh, just proving you that don't, uh, don't, Turn on your mental expectations because your body trust your body. Body is always doing right thing. So you yeah. just allow yourself to to finish whichever, whichever you want, whichever had the biggest uh, charge. And okay. sometimes um, if uh, yeah, just choose which one you want. Okay, thank you. But it's interesting. <laughs> it is interesting. I almost want to show it to you because it's so interesting. You can show me. Yeah, okay. I can see it. Let me see how to do this. Um, so this was the first one. Uh huh. And it has that big dip on the bottom here uh -huh. of the catharsis. And so then, and I kept remaking the boundaries around it because it wasn't fitting in there. And then this one was the second one I did. Yeah. It's much more simple, but it has the same thing. Yes, the same. And yeah, and I didn't even like. I definitely didn't try. Like, <laughs> just. <laughs> but it's it. uh, it's interesting how uh, this the second one seems uh, simpler, mm -hmm. but it seems more intense somehow. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So you kind of like there was much more uh, other lines at the beginning. So you had um, uh, so the pressure was a little bit dissolved. So the second one really shows you the core of the problem. So you can start yeah. with the second one. So it's a... Okay, that sounds good. Thank you. Okay, so now I rounded all my corners. So I have this white is has a little bit mess. Around. Okay. And I noticed where in my body the guilt is was used to live. It's uh, my uh, uterus. There is a lot of guilt about my about my mother, uh, ma me mothering my children. So this is interesting. Okay, and this even may look like a baby if I try to turn on my imagination. Okay, so I'm becoming emotional about it. So let's do next step. Next step, we start allow ourselves. So this is outline, is us protecting it and suppressing and holding it. So now we allow to break these boundaries. We allow to let it go. And we use the narrow lines and we just break the boundaries and let it go. So it's not straight lines. It's just um, narrow line as any, anything we do. And if you have any 
uh, loops. In the middle, you can um, extend them as well. And you just break it and let it go. And you keep breathing because it could be emotional. And you break and let it go. And you break and let it go. So we are doing narrow lines. So this letting go is organic. If for any reason you must do like straight lines, do them. It will be a little bit too radical, but sometimes you need to do some very um, well-defined action to break the core of the uh, outline. Like you, if you feel it, you need to do straight line, it will be uh, uncomfortable, but if it's only way you can do it, do it. So don't uh, worry that it's not, this is not narrow lines. And like I know that many people will see it like, oh, but if it's only way you can do it, do it this way. And maybe next one will be about with narrow lines. And you really don't need to find a good spot that where you want to extend. You can start doing it from any point inside. And if you want, you can start it from the very middle and you just expand it. And somebody is mowing outside. I hope it's not as loud. So you start just extending lines. Interesting. I'm like really having heaviness it's in my body it's like when you was holding something very heavy and suddenly somebody took it from you from your shoulders you feel like everything is so heavy and relaxed like because muscles relaxed finally so Pay attention how body is reacting. And if you've done some straight lines, you can add some narrow lines around it so it will be more organic. And maybe just allow yourself to integrate it. And like as much as you need lines, you can add as much as you need. If you have so much lines inside, you can do as many outside. What if you feel like you want to use more thicker lines for the additional lines? If you feel like you want, you do. Can you cross your other neural lines when you're yes. writing those? Okay. Yes, yeah. Because uh, neural lines, they just represent any process. It's a process of thinking, or maybe it's a process of doing something, some actions, and they can uh, interact with each other. So you can, 
uh, eat and thinking at the same time. You can talk and read at the same time. So it's, um, and of course, when they interact, there is a uh, uh, intersection. And when you integrate them, there becomes a nexus or like when you can join them, they create a new uh, possibility, a new idea or, or maybe a new uh, result. I was going to ask you, is it possible in Neurographica to have too many circles? No, it's impossible. So there is a very good exercise where you can do 40 circles and can join them, like um, integrate together. So the circles is always about harmony and harmony is never get uh, old or overwhelming so it could be very uh, healing and when we work with kids sometimes like when you have somewhere in on your drawing like very very intense place and you cannot even go there draw a circle at that place and allow yourself to feel that there is something harmonious about it and it will be enough resource for you to move forward in neurographica we have to be very careful with uh, triangles but with circles I don't feel that we can be hmm, like overwhelming. If, of course, it depends on the subject. Like if you're working with the um, business project and everything that you want is just a harmony, it will be not very effective business because business requires some conflicts. So, but if it's just in general, especially if you're working with health, it could be healing. I don't know, I'm just like when I'm working with my uh, business projects or my some things that I want to really move forward, I'm not very good at drawing much circles. There is always some squares and triangles there. Okay, so pay attention to your body. I'm like, you always repeat it. Pay attention to your body, to your emotions, to your insights, to what you're thinking. Maybe some, something will be revealed. Even during the rounding. And you can add more lines at any time. So sometimes we get overwhelmed by how many lines we have. So in this case, like if you easily get overwhelmed or is it very complex subject in the first place, you can draw several lines like two, three and start rounding. And when you feel calm, you can move forward and draw another three lines and rounding and another three. So you define how fast you want to move forward, how much resources you want to be um, 
how, how much res uh, resources you need to have on during the drawing. So it's um, and if if you want to try something new that I never said it, try it. You don't need to ask my permission to try something new about your unique theme. I'm right now like um, I started drawing Neurographica three years ago and it, I wasn't trained how to do it. It's like a friend of mine showed me on a napkin in the uh, restaurant on maybe on the back side of the menu, something like very simple. And she was not certified instructor as well. So she just showed me something very simple. And when I look on my drawing that I did three years ago, without much understanding what I was doing, there's so many mistakes there. It's like completely different. It's something, but not neurographic at all. And it doesn't really matter because it's helped me. At that time, it was enough. And so I want you to try to do, um, if it's helping, it really doesn't matter if you do it right or if it's you doing something unique. And maybe you're creating your own style. Have you had any any time or uh, do you know anybody who um, did neurographica and felt worse? One more time. Did neurographica who inside? drew neurographica and uh, felt worse after? After, instead of feeling better, felt worse. Uh, it's, as I said, it could be discomfort, but it's, I did not really, uh, and it's, uh, we usually finish every drawing and on a kind of resourceful, conditions and if it's not we still know something is showing up i cannot say that i had witnessed that somebody is like really opened the pandora box and like really did not sometimes we need to make some uh, we we open something and we know that we need to work more on it so that's why like if we made something and we start feeling that it's not complete, that something should be gone more and more and more. I want to tell you the story how I started to work on my relationship case. And I was uh, aware that it could be a challenge. So because... Um, friend of mine, my, uh, she is a neurographic instructor as well, and she did hers, and she said like, Anna, if you ever decide to work on relationship, be aware that this could make everything at some point so bad that you will regret, but you just keep drawing because it will be better you just keep drawing and going through the states like we kind of forcing everything to happen faster and i'm like so i was delaying and delaying and she, uh, she repeated the story many times so when like when she did the um, worked on the relationship and at some point they decided to divorce <laughs> And until they found something that really united them. 
And I was like, okay, maybe my case will be different. Maybe my will be so gentle. But when you decide uh, to work on the such subjects as the relationships, there is already something that needs to be changed. And I started and I experienced such a blissful experiences and like everything was beautiful and I'm like falling in love with my husband over and over again and it's like so much insight and in real life one day we had such a big argument that like and it's happened from nothing like it's just like st started arguing and ended up is like okay we get divorced okay we get divorced so this is like and I'm like okay it's not what i expected from my drawing but it's uh, actually the at that exact moment when we decided that we will maybe it's a good idea to get divorced we both had such a freedom that it's always an option for some reason, it was, we were so afraid, there is such a fear from each of us that the divorce is like uh, impossible. We had a church wedding and it's like really it's so much, everything is gets so complicated and kids and, but when we decided and we had such, that yes, we, have, we still have this option. There is nothing really can limit us and nothing really can force us to stay together. That we started, both of us, spontaneously, start realizing what is the good options if we don't want to. So we decided to get divorced only for maybe five minutes. But it was enough for us to find why we want to be t together. So it's maybe getting worse. But since that moment, everything has shifted. I'm like, I'm married for 20 years. And I've never been so happy in my marriage before. As happy as I am right now. Because it's just um, different perception to the relationship now. I cannot say that it can be changed because everything can be changed, but I don't have the fear anymore. I don't, uh, I'm not afraid to, um, to be, single mom or whatever it's, uh, because I'm, I know that I'm not. So I hope I answered your question. Okay. Yes, thank you. <laughs> it's a little bit more personal. So as always, I hope I will keep this <laughs> video <laughs> public. <laughs> but uh, so if it's going to be uh, worse at some point, just stay with this. It means that you need to face some of your demons. Something needs to be um, transformed and accepted as it is. Okay, so come back to my drawing. So I'm ready to move to next step. And now if I look at my drawing, this original shape that is already everything is rounded and i feel that there is so much freedom when it's uh, broken the boundaries are broken the egg is broken so nothing something is ready to get born and my shape looks like a sponge sponge that can suck in everything that i can offer to it instead of the guilt fear, anger, anxiety, whatever you're dealing with. So what I want to offer to it, like what I want to substitute it with. Oh. So first I do the circle and you decide the size, how big and where it's gonna be. 
So it's your decision. So I want to draw a circle that will represent, and I highly encourage you to start with this as well, that will represent the gratitude. Gratitude to this uh, feeling or this thing that was in my life that really uh, made me uh, at some point, like if, uh, if I am here right now, the way I am right now, it's only because this was part of me and this was impacting me. So, so it's when it was holding me back, there was some reason that it was. So I'm bringing my gratitude to what I've experienced in my life and what I, uh, what, I, what I'm right now is trying to let go. And I'm bringing from this circle, narrow-lined, that going through my shape, my catharsis, and moving forward and going forward to better life, better, happier feelings, lighter feelings. And I'm very grateful for what I've experienced. Because even the guilt moved me and forced me to be a um, better mom. Maybe not always, but I at least tried. Anya, I have a question. Is that circle have to be on the left side or right side? It really Which doesn't matter. it really doesn't matter. Uh -huh. It okay. may give you some clues. Um, the original like if it's a uh, my is on the left side, but my subject is more related to the motherhood as well. So this is uh, related. So yours could be on the right side and it could be related to maybe, I don't know, fathers and men in general, professional. It's, uh, but don't really stuck with this, like analyzing, does it matter which side? Like trust your body, trust your body first. So and I'm not ready quite for the circle yet because I'm still rounding a couple things, but I have a question. I have these like lines from my catharsis uh -huh. that just end in the middle of nowhere and I don't like them. Is that just leave them as they are or can I bring them out? More. So bring them to the edge of the paper. It's like really okay. when we have this hanging uh, uh, lines around, mm -hmm. it's more like I had an intention to let it go or to ask for help and I've never really finished the movement. So okay. you made something but never finished it. So that could be disturbing. So you yes, just, I don't uh, like it. Yeah. So just bring them okay, to the so edge. Okay, thank you. And again, if you feel like this is a uh, too much, like huge catharsis on such a small piece of paper, there is always an option that you can glue additional piece of paper and make it bigger. And maybe you can, um, uh, like if you have several things to let go, you can glue them together and unite them. Uh, and it will be m like really big healing drawing. Like if I ready to let go separate things, many things together. So I will uh, allow them to be worked on like separately, but at the end I can unite them because they all represent me. And I want to be cool again and see how you have so much other resources. Again, like I added gratitude and I integrated before I adding anything else. I don't want you to rush. So you can 
feel that you can be at your speed, at your pace. Some shapes are bigger than others. Is there any meaning in terms of the relative sizes of the shapes in one's drawing? So the sh size of the shape is usually representing the value of this um, symbol because each circle is a uh, could be symbolical for you. And it's only you decide what kind of symbols you uh, inviting. Like if it's, uh, uh, if you have a big uh, shape that representing fear, you may bring at least as big or even bigger shapes that will represent security, safety, some um, protection, and it's uh, only you decide how big you need to balance. Or maybe you need to bring four smaller circles, but each of them will have this big qualities and protective qualities for you that will be together more uh, healing than one big. The outlines, I'm like, when we bring something harmonious like gratitude or love or maybe um, something else, you can do, I highly encourage to do the circles because uh, again, if we want to support ourselves, it's uh, first of all, we need to balance ourselves. We need to find the harmony inside of ourselves but if you for example if you want to let go your laziness and you like because you cannot start moving forward or start running or exercise or do something you can in this particular case it's like when you need to uh, substitute it with some action you can bring the triangle you can bring some actions in your life and it will be very healing as well so it's a you decide w what you want it's a, it's really so much depends on the subject what about like this so you're drawing this circle right now within mm -hmm. that circle you have sh other shapes right the circle is made of shapes some of yes. those shapes are bigger and some of those shapes are smaller inside the circle. Is there any, um, so you're not, so those shapes are not representing uh, the circle? No, 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 so no, no, no. What about those different sizes? So there is anything in terms of the relationship of the different sizes of those type of shapes? No, so, uh, I don't really analyze the shapes inside of any of those um, shapes. So uh, I may sometimes to see if, for example, this looks like on my drawing, this look like already a curve that could be extended as a circle. And I probably, uh, right now, I don't know what it is, but I can bring and make a circle. Or in this case, it looks more like an egg but this is enough for me to know that, okay, something harmonious I invite in my life and I will connect this with what I'm letting go. I connect with the sponge. I'm calling it sponge now because I'm like uh, feeling it with different emotions and different feelings. but I don't really look at what it is uh, inside. So I can find another circle inside of this circle, but it's uh, if you want to. Does it uh, give you any symbols? Does it show you something that you familiar with? Remember, it's your body talking to you. Like it's you who drawing those lines. If it speaks to you through the shapes, 
read the message. If I don't analyze the shapes, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that you don't cannot. Well, also like, okay, so in your very, the very center of your sponge, I guess you mm -hmm. have a lot. You have a lot of smaller shapes, right? And yes. then as you go outwards, they're they're larger. Um, but you're saying there's really there's nearly no significance in terms of oh there's a lot of smaller shapes here towards the center and as they go out they're larger and I'm choosing not to make those larger shapes on the outer edges any smaller so you just leave them there's no I leave them like what I've noticed about my sponge that it has a circle inside of it and I feel like I so there is some harmony and uh, balance inside of what uh, what I'm letting go. So there is something that is already uh, gives me a sense of uh, balance. And it's uh, this this I, I notice, but I don't really give a lot of an analysis to what kind of shape it is. Like if there was uh, uh, some spikes, I would probably pay attention to them, but not right now. Like uh, everything seems um, harmonious, what I'm doing at least. But it could be different on yours. So if, it's, if you feel like there is some meaning to this shape, you can do. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I can put some smaller circles here. It will be like a bubble of air that helps me to breathe. And it could be bigger somewhere very close by. Like for example, I can extend this curve. And again, I don't know yet what it is. I can name it if I want, but it's already built in. It's already potential was hidden in lines. It's not something that I'm just artificially put it on. Like this was, I want gratitude, I put it here. Those two, I found the potential in lines. So. It's up to you. There's both ways that you can do. Just bring the circle or find a curve that may represent a circle. And when I'm on hunt, find a curve that can be extended to circles. I cannot stop anymore. So I see something here. And I see something here. And all of them, I know because they circles, uh, I know that they harmonious and very peaceful. So, uh, and I supporting my, um, like when I let go, there is a, not emptiness, but there is a space that needs to be filled with different vibrations. And I just bring good uh, feelings and just, fill the gap, fill the uh, void that was created by letting go. So what do you want to bring in your life when, when this uh, thing that you wanted to let go is gone? How do you want to feel? How do you, what do you want to experience? It could be opposite, but it's not really necessary. Maybe you feel just freedom, freedom to choose. This is, could be very healing. That you not obligated to, to feel anxious. You can Well, for example, like if you do some letting go laziness, you will have option. I want, sometimes I want to be lazy, sometimes I don't. So it's a 
freedom when you have a choice to say yes or no? This is a very beautiful circle. How is your body is changing when you bring more um, positive feelings to your drawing? So does it feel more relaxed or is it feels like, oh, now I have to integrate this one as well. So it's, <laughs> it could be. Maybe your uh, body is just exhausted from so many changes in your life and it could be uh, recognized even positive things could be recognized like um, like a threat because uh, great excitement could be as stressful as a tragedy like if you would win a lottery I bet it's uh, for the body is as stressful as uh, just losing money, big money. Because the same reactions. So the I'm, outcome I'm, will be different. Mm -hmm. So I did the gratitude circle. I might be a little behind. And then you just were saying to fill it with a, something else if there's a spot. Or could I just put something I want to fill it in anywhere? So fill it with what you want. Uh, okay. Like I would highly recommend to do like the gratitude mm -hmm. uh, with high, with the highest vibration, gratitude and okay. love and like really heart love, not just uh, um, I saying that I love you, but like if you can experience it, emotionally experience it, you feel yourself feel you this void with love it will be very healing so but you can draw bring something else like if you if for example if you were working on the i'm letting go my perception of uh, money it's like that uh, the if i poor and i want to let go that uh, you can bring the a feeling of prosperity how does it feel uh, enough in your life how does it feel um, generous to be generous or supportive and i can put those circles wherever i want or it, it looks like you aren't putting any of them on top of of your catharsis. so i'm really uh, because i was uh, creating new circles smaller ones mm -hmm. so i'm trying to integrate them and i don't really know what, what they represent because i did not give any meanings to them but i'm going to draw some uh, here and here so i'm really trying to balance everything and see if anything is um, out of balance and if anything is out of um, kind of uh, Okay. What, what so other word kind of... that, that represents balance from harmony? I want my drawing uh, look harmonious. Okay. I think that answers my questions, but I can draw them wherever I want. Yes. Whatever okay. you want, how big you want, and whatever you want. So it's like really, it's uh, your, uh, you decide. So for this one, I did four and I did gratitude, love, peace, and I did um, hope. Oh, no, no, it was not peace. It was faith and hope. So. Okay, thank you. But yours could be different. Yours could be uh, very unique depending on your theme. Uh, when we pick the theme, there is a, some, when we want to change something, 
most likely we have this already image how we want to uh, feel instead and bring this in instead bring this uh, expectations and fill the gap allow yourself to visualize it on the drawing Can you talk about doing a series on one theme, like an example of what that might look like? So we always, any uh, series that we want to work on, any big themes, you always start with lifting inner constraints. So let me see if I have any pictures. To There are different exercises, but um, just trying to see if I have any of the soap drawings on the suit. And you don't need to finish like you can uh, to do everything at the same time. Like every day, I have to draw uh, something. It's actually not. Uh, so you can draw something, let it aside, and maybe in a week or two you draw another one. You can do the other drawings in the middle, but you still keep. Uh, so, for example, I'll show you some of this. Like, I had a big case of drawings related to my uh, business. So, this is one of this when you set up goals. So, next one was, uh, and you see, I have several drawings in the middle. Uh, next one was uh, the Neira tree related to the business and projects. This one was related to inviting groups and clients. And this one, another drawing about the business. This was timeline. One was about business as well, more like um, organizing specific course that I was working. This was about business as well, more about relationships. This was about dealing with conflict related to business. And this one was about business as well. So you see, they all different. And I have several of them uh, in the middle, but it's uh, between them. But I still, even if I need to activate my perception about business, I can go back and create another drawing. Now. I think that's, that's all I had about business. So they could be completely different and different exercises related to it. But because you're, uh, when you start working on one theme, the theme is transforming every time. And it's, um, it's changing. And you can sometimes start with the uh, business, but there is different aspects in the business. There could be relationship issues or could be uh, my mental beliefs or my um, concept about money and or maybe I don't know how to set up goals or maybe I need to work with timeline and set up some uh, important due dates on my timeline related to it. So it's really up to uh, 
it depends. There's so much depends on the how the theme is revealing itself, how many layers you have and what kind of uh, layers you have. At the very end of each drawing, we usually have a new perception of what has changed related to your theme. How did it change? And you have a, uh, with, you can really, um, at the end of each drawing, you can ask yourself, like, what is right now the most important in this theme? Like, where, which direction I can go? So you cleaned one corner, so which corner you want to go next? And it will be, sometimes you st st stuck with uh, one corner and you keep cleaning and cleaning until you really satisfy yourself with results. My pen is dying. Okay. Pen is gone. Okay, any other questions? Everyone is so concentrated. Yeah, I'm working hard. I'm good. <laughs> Anna, I think you mentioned there's like 10 algorithms and then all these exercises are derived from the algorithms. Yes. So for example, this, uh, this uh, exercise we're doing today, what's its parent algorithm? So the, the uh, it's a lifting inner constraints. Wherever you have a catharsis, it's always about lifting uh, inner constraints. When you have this uh, when we do catharsis, we can express this uh, big emotional charge that is uh, suppressed inside of our body. And we just allowed it to be released. Uh, there is, a, we already worked on, there is a big ex, uh, algorithm about timelines. There is an algorithm Okay, lifting inner constraints, relationships, near uh, working with colors, working with shapes, uh, like when you can do some compositions related to it. And we use some of those elements, uh, near sketching we've done with brain. And what else? Um, Nero timing we've done. Setting goals, we haven't done setting goals and results, achieving results. And there is a- uh, Working with archangels, didn't we? With guides. We did with guides and human body. Yes, the the with uh, human body is a uh, near a sketching. Wherever you bring some outlines or your pictures, and you working on some uh, drawing, it's a uh, it's going to be 
uh, neuro sketching when you working with uh, visualizing this uh, image. So there is a, uh, Pavel Piskarev has his own philosophy about metamodern and it's, uh, I'm not ready to discuss about it because it took me quite a long time to even understand what he means. And the biggest meaning of the metamodern is that like we, time is changing and every time is re um, bringing new um, paradigms, paradigms and agendas for everybody, uh, for the whole humanity. And that we are going to the new paradigm where everybody is will be more spiritual and more mm, that everybody can be healer for themselves that people will be uh, more activated so this is my understanding of his uh, philosophy it's a very complex philosophy not not complex i would say it's not Mm, it's philosophy <laughs> after all. So there is some uh, so, some interesting things that he is talking about it, but I don't really feel comfortable to teach those concepts yet. So I'm 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 still learning and I'm still growing. So this is something that I'm not, uh, because whatever I will tell you, it will be from my perception and it's uh, maybe limiting his concept. Okay. What well, I see that this one is outline of a huge circle and I want to bring it. And it will be big. And I think that it will be faith. Faith. My faith. Faith that I've done everything right. That everything that happened was supposed to happen. And it's interesting that my, uh, again, to, coming back to the question about sizes, that for some reason, faith is even bigger than gratitude. And I don't know how I know that this circle is a faith, but it is to me. And this is what matters. Maybe for you it looks some like something different, but it's my drawing and I name it because I trust my intuition. Not because I stubborn, but because I trust my intuition. It really looks very interesting, this circle. Okay. And these three smaller ones. And one more I want to, I want to extend this one. I want to make this one bigger. Okay. 
again, circles not always need to be like perfect circles. And I can make them I can try and to keep the circles intersect too, right? Oh yes, yeah. They can intersect, they can be one inside of another. So like this one. So for some reason I had a smaller one and it's a beautiful circle by itself. But I feel like it's time to grow. And this is, could be even bigger. So this was expanded from what I had at the beginning. So in this circle, it's a, I name it love. Love instead of guilt. And this is, a, and it's interesting that for me, it was a smaller love and it was enough at some point, but now it's, it can be expanded. Expand it, expand it, so it could be much more, uh, much bigger and much more powerful. Interesting. My body starts to react. I feel like not singing, but like I feel like I want to humming. Something. Like sound, it wants to be born out of it. So Anna, if I have a circle and I don't know what it stands for, I can just keep drawing it and let yes. it be, whatever it is. Yes, okay. because your subconscious mind will fill it with meanings. Mm -hmm. It really does not, it's only uh, you need to understand very clear that this is a resource that you're bringing. You don't recognize it yet, what it is but you know that it exists and it's available for you. This is more important. Okay, thank you. And when we start coloring, if you had some outlines or shapes that really was uh, meaningful to you at the beginning, inside of other shapes, like many, most of the people see at the beginning, they always see his heart or they see the butterfly wings or, and it's a, uh, if it helps you to feel good about it, about your drawing, if it really has this positive um, impression on you, do it. Like you may highlight it. Uh, after some experience, you will be more inspired by very abstract shapes and it will be enough for you just uh, recognize the outlines of some of those shapes. Okay. My next step, I start coloring. 
And I just use, uh, even I have a black one, I can just use uh, regular colors, regular pencils. And colors will be not as bright. Interesting. Peach. I really don't have any expectations what colors I want. I'm just like pulling them and see how it will play. Okay. So. And I, the same, you can create unusual shapes and maybe flow of um, uh, of colors or you can just color separate uh, circles together uh, like one circle one color or another circle another color so it's up to you like which kind of uh, shapes you want to create i want to create just unusual uh, lines i don't know it will be and it goes this way. And when you start coloring, you will notice that some of these uh, angles are not rounded. You just round them. It's my husband came home. Want to color the circles that inside of my sponge. Did your um, emotional and physical um, and not conditions like how did? How did it change your emotions, maybe your body reactions? Did, do you even feel any changes? Or do you still feel some discomfort?
So do you always do these in like a meditative state or do you like sometimes watch TV at the same time you're doing your neurograph? I used to watch TV before, but now I I cannot even listen to the book when I do neurographica. It's a and it's a, maybe not even ca um, connected to that something shifted inside of me and my perception about neurographica. I'm just like lately have so much communication that it's my way to be at peace that I don't have to uh, absorb any other information when I do neurographical. This is my meditation and I feel very peaceful and very creative and very calm. I'm like, really, I don't rush when I do neurographical. I don't, I really don't like when I'm rushed or when I do it. So if you feel like you can do watch tv yes you can sometimes i do but it's a very rarely usually i'm so concentrated and so focused um that i don't really feel that needed it looks like a dancing man green one <laughs> you don't see like it, it's on my camera it doesn't really seems very good colors but it's a green color. Green dancing man. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Um, basically, what I see in, uh, I don't know, I'm trying not to see patterns, but I see uh, same shape in this neurographica as the shape in my previous neurographica. I don't know. Uh, discontinuation of shape or something it's just something interesting that i'm noticing so i want to share it with you does anybody else have the experience like uh, continuing mm, having the same shape the same shape kind of um, takes form i didn't do that shape but again takes form so you what does it look like what kind of shape is it? What I cannot kind? name it really. I can, but I cannot name it. Do you see? Wait, wait, wait. Let me find you. Okay. So no, this is the shape. This one, like a raqueta. Wait, wait. I don't see uh, the drawing. I can uh, hear you. We don't have the video. Oh, oh I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is. This is my drawing. Yes. And the shape is this one. This one. Yeah, she said it's uh, she didn't previously. The previous, I can send you a picture of my previous and you'll see it. And here and it, it comes. And you recognize it as a rocket? Yeah. Like a yeah, comet? I do like a comet and rocket and uh, mm -hmm. yeah like a fast moving vehicle <laughs> <laughs> so, something with, so you have association with the speed yeah true but she drew the same shape in a previous yeah yeah uh, yeah mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah but uh, you are right i'm getting where you are going uh, i have association with speed and maybe could be impatience, no, not patience, yes. It could the, be impatience the, as well, but it's, mm, let me think. So the uh, rocket is, uh, so this is not like launching rocket. This is already so, flying rocket. So yep, it's a yep, rocket. Yep. Sometimes I think it's a heart. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like a heart who is mm, trying to get out of your chest, you know, uh, it, on, yeah, and also, uh, also I view it as heart, but в движение такое, в сердце движение какое-то, движение есть, 
mm -hmm. action какой-то. Okay, so it's action. Move, even if it's hard, so something is moving. True. Uh, so, uh, Elka, just you can close your eyes and just imagine how this heart is slowing down. Wow, thank you. So just because when we're rushing through some things, like when we're really trying to run through the yeah something, it's usually there is a fear is hidden there. Like uh -huh. when we're going to the dark uh, park, we try mm -hmm. to rushing through it so, so we don't really uh, fear long enough to so imagine how this heart is slowing down and see if anything starts showing up what this heart is running from what is it running uh, or so there is a two points it's a yeah. rushing from something or it's rushing to something so a rushing from to 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 yeah and the fear i contacted the fear it's i might be running out of time yeah so you run yeah mm. and running to something so, like, I, the only thing I want to tell you that when you're running, and even if you, especially when you have a very limited time, slow down and enjoy the moment that you have right now. Uh, when I try to slow my heart down, uh -huh. I immediately, immediately visualized um, Saturn with the orbit around it, it uh -huh. just came to, and then um, uh, emotion of gratitude came, just for slowing my heart down. I don't know why Saturn came. Saturn is a very strict teacher, and Saturn is about routine okay. and structure. So you yeah. need to be very, uh, you, you need to have a very um, well-defined schedule. Yes. And follow the schedule. And it's a hard work, uh, Saturn represents as well, hard, hard work. work, hard work. And, yeah. But it's, uh, if you do whatever it requires, to, whatever Saturn is teaching you to do, it will um, it will reward you at the end. It's, it could be very generous teacher. Wow! But you need to be yeah. very uh, precise on schedule, and don't afraid to work hard. Thank you. Saturns represent bones as well, bone skeleton, teeth. You need mm -hmm. to take care of those ones. Thank you. Thank you. Mm, thank you so sl yes yeah, slow down and it's a uh, it could be not easy but saturn is a slow slow planet as well so it's it takes 29 years to make the whole circle around sun so it's uh, not time to rush it's about quality, not about quantity. You need to make sure that you don't miss small details. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Discipline. Discipline. This is a synonym for the Saturn. Discipline. I love that word. It comes more and more to my... <laughs> yeah. The to awareness. My... Yes. The awareness, yes. The awareness of discipline. Thank you. It's interesting. Nobody really seen planets during the drawing. You live and learn. <laughs> and it could be, yeah, because everybody has a different, um, 
visuals, uh, visual effects. And it's, uh, I loved when I was teaching my first class, one of the students say that Neurographica is like, a, uh, like we are kids and we are playing with a secret language and we tried to understand what this language means. And it's like, this is exactly what we are trying to do, like really trying to uh, read the language that our body and our subconscious mind is talking to us. It's like, I see the green man is dancing, maybe even with the uh, shamanic drum. Maybe it's a shaman is dancing. Interesting. I never gave interpretation of my drawings. <laughs> Let's invite another, somebody else to just dance and see how it goes. Let's do some yellow and yellow. So this will be yellow and this will be moon. And moon is actually, if we are talking about planets, moon represents motherhood and it represents safety and security. That's an interesting class today. So much astrology. And <laughs> maybe I have to pass the test that I was delaying. Because maybe I need to go to next level and read some more information about astrology. So Anna, I'm having a hard time wanting to color mine. Like Do you no like colors are coming to mine. Well, I don't know. I just can't find a color that fits. I don't know if I need to sit on it more until it comes to me. So this, the easiest way you can close your eyes and just bring the colors that, that okay. show up and see. Okay. When you bring the color, you will see, do you mm -hmm. like it or not? Mm -hmm. So sometimes we need to have this um, uh, limitations to really understand what we want in our lives. Mm -hmm. When we like, no, I don't want this color. I know for sure that I don't want this one. So. <laughs> <laughs> and going from the opposition, you can find actually what you want. Okay. And does it matter if I use pens or pencil or any, any colors, like crayons? Any colors. Uh, crayons a little bit um, messy, but you can mm -hmm. try. The, the crayons, what good is about them that they have this... Um, um, texture mm -hmm. that you really can use your fingers and like really push it in the paper so it's a different uh, feelings uh, the okay. same you can use pastel and like mm -hmm. if you want this uh, emotions to be revealed or integrated like physically integrated turn on like use a pastel and really push it in the paper and like re that's why i'm really touching my drawing a lot because i want this activated physically be involved in the drawing okay. and i'm like uh, always um, i don't use the blender but i use my fingers a lot to blend the colors and blend them with paper so it's Thank okay. you for bringing this opportunity to discuss this question, especially when we when uh, we work with kids. Some strong emotions could be revealed through the different materials. It's very, uh, and we um, we still be kids ourselves. So mm -hmm. it's really, so to play with this, try different ones. I purchased new instrument, like new materials that I'm like really falling in love. I used, uh, I purchased them used. So there is, this is a Prismacolor art sticks. It's a woodless colored pencils that you mm. really can just uh, use them and color 
and like they could be very interesting and very different texture when you hold the sticks mm -hmm. it's a different you can use pastel pastel is uh, there are so many brands that could be affordable or is it ever that it just needs to settle a bit before i put the colors in because it's already been so much like so it's up to you if you feel overwhelmed yeah. don't push don't push harder than it's need to be if you okay. feel that something is already shifted and you want to uh, to stay with this feeling, uh -huh. you can you can delay it and finish it tomorrow. Uh, another yeah. thing that like make sure that you round it all corners, like all angles are rounded, and in mm -hmm. this case, it's much safer to let it stay. And tomorrow like what's interesting is about the drawing so you can always for example i was looking like this all the time and next morning i open it and i turn it back like turn it 180 degrees and it's completely different story mm, i can tell mm -hmm. completely different image and different meanings to me so yeah, sometimes yeah. we need some uh, sometimes we need some time to digest it like to really mm -hmm. uh, integrate it so it's um don't stuck yeah. with the meanings and don't stuck with uh, don't feel that you are ob obliged to finish everything in one day not mm -hmm. really interesting i see your heart again Do I want to color it? Okay, Anna, I might just stop here and then um, are you going to do you think you'll post this video? Uh, yes, I was planning to do one. Okay, so maybe I'll, I'll look at the end to see if there's anything else and then I might just color it tomorrow. Okay, and if you want like some feedback private, you can just text me or email me. You know how. Okay, that sure. sounds good. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, I'll see you. I'll see you. I'll, I might text you the picture when it's done. Mm hmm. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Have a good night. Now I see a big heart that shaman is dancing around. And the moon become a drum. <laughs> Something is going on. So our next class that I'm planning to do is about soul retrieval. So we will work with some big theme. It's a big theme to, to collect pieces of soul that are, we left somewhere or maybe with somebody and we still have a desire to get everything back to move forward who it's a beautiful heart Just want to bring some other colors.
Any other questions? And it's interesting, like the, now I remember like which circle means we, which feeling. And this one was a gratitude that is really uh, supporting and grounding the, the person who is dancing here. The moon is a love. And this is a faith that gives the spine of the human dancing this is my interpretation it's like really from such abstract uh, drawing it's interesting how you can see and because it's a uh, it's my drawing i can see whatever i want and it could be my story like if i honestly believe in this and i have a emotional connection to the story it's healing but if for example if you have a beautiful story or and has nothing really to re resonate with you maybe it's not the right story maybe it's something simpler and more um, is more important for you so it's uh, you decide what you want to see on your picture or just like allow it allow yourself to see it and be amazed okay face face what do you With the black paper, everything seems uh, not as uh, bold. If it would be just white paper, it would be yeah, different. It's a different um, feeling when you use this sticks instead of pencils.
they quite expensive so i don't really <laughs> recommend to invest in them so because it's a pricey stuff that's why i have to buy used ones i love ebay eBay, you can buy anything i feel like i have um, everything is on my I colored enough. I don't feel like I want to color anything else. And again, at the very end, as always, we do field lines that we make a little bit bolder. Let me see if I can use this bolder one. And just to see clear that we connected and aligned with the universe with divinity to move forward and it could be another uh, meaning as well that we allow this universe accept what we are ready to let go that it's not just released and lost. It goes to the universe and it finds its own place. Okay, so now I need to integrate this bolder line and everything. What kind of paper are you using and what was that big pen thing you just used? So this is a Faber-Castell uh, pit artist pen. It's a 2.5 millimeters, it's wide. But, uh, and it's white, um, all white that I use has this chalk quality. So, and what good is about chalk that like, if you use it on top of any pencils, with a little bit time, it's usually absorbed some of the color. And it's uh, has this uh, hint of, green or hint of blue depending where it goes and it helps to really integrate the uh, this white color into the picture so it's not uh, it does not look artificial or foreign it gets more uh, integrated more organically interacted with other elements on your picture but i started to use uh, white color after quite a long time uh, like i used started to use it only last year so it's um and i demonstrate this materials not just because i have them so it's this is not a promotion or anything so So you can use a black. I most of the time I use just black, and I very happy with black colors. But to try something new, it's always a challenge, and it's always fun. So this is gives me fun. So for white pencils, I use um, Uniball Signa. They made in Japan, but you can buy them on Amazon. 
And these are so far the best I've seen. I have several others, but this is just easier to use for me. What kind of paper is the black paper you're using? Black paper is just a cardboard paper. It's, um, I don't really remember what kind of brand is it. Just um, any, any, um, any paper that can be not soft and like I want, I prefer harder. Even the, the white that I use is uh, not a flimsy printing paper. It's, so this is, uh, you can hold it and it will be like a, a cardboard. You can bend it. Because I do uh, oh, the scrapbooking, I have so much different types of paper. So. I cannot really give you the brand, but I have the whole package of the black ones. There are so many opportunities to try different materials that really you can try. I, I've seen uh, some people combine alcohol ink paintings and Nera Grafica, and it's very beautiful. I have personally haven't tried to do it. Uh, some people do use Nera Grafica drawings on uh, scarves, uh, like on silk. And it's a, it's a challenge, definitely a challenge, but it's uh, very beautiful. You can do two options. You can uh, make a drawing and just uh, order print on the scarves. There is a company that is doing it, but I haven't done it myself. Uh, or you can draw on the silk and it will be a unique scarf. Or maybe even some piece of art. On Amazon, I already found that some people sell t-shirts with the neurographical drawings print out it's not me but and you can do it yourself it's uh, whichever uh, you have a drawing that gives you some uh, sense of uh, love and resource and you really want to carry this feeling you can pre order a print on your t-shirt and it will be very unique uh, protecting clothes that you own. You can wear it uh, under your some sweater or you can just show to everyone if you want. It definitely will bring some attention to you. The only drawing I have on my clothes is uh, that one that was done on intense training in Anna. Russia. Yes? This is what I have so far. Let me find you. Okay, Kenny. Okay. 
So what I want to like, I love how bright colors, this um, coral color is a very, very, <laughs> beaming, very, very strong. But I want you to pay attention that uh, this still feel um, not isolated, but still be compressed somehow. Ex bring more lines to outside. Bring more awareness that there is other possibilities around. Maybe you're bringing something else. And it's interesting shape. All it looks like if you turn it 180 degrees, it looks like a big, big heart. Like 100, one more, turn one more. <laughs> it looks like a big heart together. But I want it to be more supported from outside. It still be so much is going on inside. I want more circles around and I want more lines around. So allow okay. yourself to be connected to the society again. Okay. Because, or even if you just bring outside some more colors, it will look different. Like I want right. it to be supported and outside world could be as bright as you are. So it's really, uh, if you draw bright society around you, you will attract this one. I see a, a mushroom. Uh huh. And oh then, yes, I see. <laughs> and then this is a rose. Uh huh. So I put a I put the um, leaf there, and then I I, I kind of highlighted it in green all the way down. Mm -hmm. And then this is uh, the moon energy. It's interesting how the really uh, rose is leaning to, like they really longing to each other, so the mushroom and the rose. But remember that the rose and mushroom are not alone. There is a forest or meadow mm -hmm. around them. So create them the safe environment around that they will be um, not so lonely to okay. them. <laughs> okay. They create a beautiful world, the world that really would feel uh, with rainbows and unicorns and maybe just some magic. Thank you. And remember that this is, will be your world as well. So this is a world that we can allow ourselves to be come on and see if um, always checking what has changed did anything changed or if anything still be the same how your body reacts, do you feel um, present, do you feel uh, irritated or maybe or maybe you can have such a strong resistance to finish that like everything seems useless and boring so this could be an option as well so there is nothing wrong about it it's your feelings just observe them be honest to yourself like during the nero graphic so you don't really need to say that you like it if if it makes you uncomfortable just stay with this uncomfortable feelings and move forward keep moving and see how it will be evolving how you evolving during this process 
Okay, I love this shaman. Or maybe it's a shaman woman. <laughs> I don't know if like shaman. Uh, holding this big heart. A shaman can be a man or a woman. Yes, I know. Yeah. There is a shaman. It's really, it's not about man. It's a, more about the duty. And serving your community. Shaman is, first of all, is the person who serves community. I think it's one of my one of my favorite drawings. And I see like this is a stick that he is uh, used on the drum. This become a drum. This has just become a heart. Maybe I'm like, today is already too late, but tomorrow, maybe I will use my drum. I have very unique drum that I brought from Siberia. And well, I have several of them. One of them was, I made myself and several I've done, I've purchased, but they were like special, one of them were special order. Interesting. And it's really, because it's a black, this, this makes sense that it's a moon yellow golden moon oh i love the story maybe i just need to write down the story about shaman woman shaman dancing with the heart let's see And it's a full moon. So yesterday was a full moon. It was a very, it's considered a magical moon because it's in Scorpio, it helps to let go. Wow, it's a perfect time for us to do it. I wasn't really aligned with this one specifically, but universe is wise and loving gave us this opportunity. Interesting. Okay, do you have any questions? Any comments, any concerns? I'm so in love with my <laughs> drawing. <laughs> That's it really <laughs> amazed me. <laughs> I was so afraid that it will be emotional, so emotional for me because I took such a uh, serious thing for myself. And I'm like so happy that I've done it. So. so everybody is drawing, everybody is quiet. 
nothing to share. So if you want to finish it on your own, you can send me the picture and I will just write down, like reply you with the comment. if you want to have a comment let me know right now we can do it Okay, ladies, ask questions, show your drawings. Uh, on my drawing, I already see the head of the shaman or Indian shaman. And I'm just like, these are like feathers. I'm going out. Well, it's interesting you had started off with sharing about your guilt related to kind of your children and mm -hmm. other type aspects. And here you created a, you know, a powerful to be male or female shaman healer with the big moon with the, aligned with the feminine. Mm hmm. It's and again, I did not have any expectations how it's going to happen and what is going to happen. So I just trust it. And that's what makes me excited and curious. How is it going to be? How is it going to happen? And what is going to happen? And it's uh, the whole process is amazed me every time I draw something. Even it seems uh, you've done it already a hundred times. Everything is kind of should be predictable. And it's not because we're working with our subconscious mind. And every day it's a new message. And it's in the form that only I can understand and feel comfortable with the message. Because... If it would be um, for different person, maybe it's a, you can see it differently on this what what is going on on my drawing, and it's uh, and it's okay because 
I got my message, you got yours from yours, and it's uh, you have a different database, you have a different subconscious mind, and it's a uh, it's message first of all for me, and I just uh, more trained and more attuned maybe to read to read this message in this way. You can. Oh, but it's just take some practice and trust. It takes trust to, to allow yourself to see the message in your drawings. Or just experience the beauty of this and peace. This is a good enough as well. I really love the idea that the faith give the spine to the shaman. This gives the structure to the shaman. And shaman is not just beating, it's protecting the heart. And take care of it. Oh, I love the story. <laughs> I need to write it down somehow. <laughs> so maybe tomorrow I have a minute to to do it. I'm like, I'm so excited to see your, your uh, drawings and it's like, how it's, um, if there is any, any stories in yours, or maybe just um, changes, how you really feel, do you feel that something was, uh, something was uh, left? or is gone, or is it a um, different perception to the theme? So it's very interesting how it's played for every of you, for everybody. So I'm switching cameras so I, you can see me. Oh. <laughs> I need to. It's interesting, like one of my camera has this mirror effect, another does not. So I, whenever I switch it, I need to adjust it. Oh, now I see myself. And it's really drives me crazy because I cannot do mirror. <laughs> okay. So here's oh. the update from last time. Uh -huh. This is about timeline. So I love how I love how much you added more colors from the sun and it's a, and there's so much more on this ones. Yes, you brought more. You brought more events outside, no, even outside of your timeline that really things has uh, is happening around us and it's what makes our life more interesting. Okay, good. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, this is second one. Yes. Yeah. 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 I remember because it's a different sun and it's a different, um, different colors, different uh, senses, and you brought more orange on the bottom. Yes, you have a different one. Again. So I love how much more lines outside you start using. Because this is uh, really representing how much more you are open to, to other people. And it's very, very, it makes me very happy and excited. Yay, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. So the green, uh, yes, draw, maybe you can draw more circles around just representing other, um, and entities around okay. it could be fairies and maybe if you have you have if you have the sense of the organic like mushroom and rose they can be different bugs around them that really helps them to evolve and spread the 
uh, pull around, makes something excited. Okay, ladies, do you have any more questions or is it a good time to, to let you go? Yep, I have no more questions, but thank you, Anna. This has been wonderful and thank you for taking on this topic. So try different, uh, like if you still feel like it's something um, not finished yet, you can do another drawing and see, even by catharsis, you will uh, understand if something has sh uh, shifted about the, uh, how much was the catharsis and how intense it was, because something has shifted for sure. It could be not as profound as expected. And maybe it's just need some time to absorb and see. Like we expecting big changes right away. And sm even small change will lead to big changes. Like, but something needs to be started with. And it's a... Uh, and I'm glad that we started. And I'm glad uh, that I was part of it as well. <laughs> so something has changed for me for sure. I'm like so excited about my drawing and I'm like really, so I feel that uh, everything has a purpose now. What, what, whatever happened in my life and it's, um, I feel it's, it's beautiful anyway. Everything is beautiful as it should be. Okay, so thanks a lot for being with me, for being so precise and visiting every class, <laughs> so, almost class. So it's always my pleasure to see, to talk, and thank you for the questions and for your questions and for sharing, like sharing your questions it's uh thank you even Anna. asking even asking questions is like you share something very deep in curi your curiosity with us it's a it's a pleasure okay have a good night, good and, night. Thank you. and next time we will do the soul retrieval so next that sounds exciting and maybe maybe i will bring my drum and we'll do yeah something. show us your drums Seven. yeah i'll show you my start, start off the, the uh, class with some drumming yes yeah okay again okay, thank you <laughs> have a good night you bye. too bye bye